does have some pragmatic and concrete suggestions. The first is stop hating ourselves for, for, for participating in digital culture. You know, it's a real drag on the, our health and our immune system to spend our time on our phones or on, on our laptops or in other kinds of digital space using GPS technology, thinking that there's something wrong with us for doing it. Um, so that's, that's the first thing that the, that the book you know, ask, really asks people to do. Just for an hour or two, imagine the internet is not a neurotoxin. It's not causing brain damage. It's an opportunity and an opportunity to use wholeheartedly, to use with confidence, to use with dignity, to use with all your humanity. Now each of the forms has its own constraints. So if you're using text online to show up to consumers or to um, meet your friends, then there are certain, um, there's certain considerations, and they're the considerations that poets have made sense of. So one of, the, one of the most beautiful things I've ever heard said about how poets construct their, their sentences, their phrases, their, their, their lines, is that, and this is Helen Vendler, the great, uh, the great um, critic of poetry. She says that at every moment, after every word, any word can follow it next. So in the gap between two words, the, you give the impression or the illusion that you have that any word is possible. And the reader should feel just a slight, slight micron intake of breath, like what could come next? So for companies showing up online, surprise, delight. How do you use that little space between words so that you don't, you know, say you are leveraging a cliche like at the end of the day, right? You, that you don't, um, maybe it's at the end of the millennium. Maybe it's a different word there other than day. You know, when you think of, of beautiful slogans that capture something in our minds, they're surprising. You know, they're delightful. They're, they're you, you know, oh, I didn't expect it to go in that direction. And the same is true for Twitter. You know, when you look at political candidates that have used Twitter well, like I must say Donald Trump, you don't know what he's going to say next. You know, he's, he's, he has us... Um, you know, he has us in suspense all the time, and that suspense is very important. I think brands have had a hard time building suspense because it's nerve-wracking a little bit to take those kind of risks, but it's necessary. As for images, learn the vernacular of a place like, like, like uh, Instagram. It's not easy. I just tried the other night to learn the, Instagram, the, uh, the idiom of, of Twitch, to learn to read up thread, as they say on Twitch. And most of the vocabulary was entirely new to me. You know, I didn't realize that grill is a girl, that when um, Melania Trump was described as salt, that that was an allusion to an Angelina Jolie movie from 2010, that this kind of shorthand, you don't look at that kind of shorthand, say on Instagram, the grammar of Instagram, whether you use filters or not, the move to no filter away from, you know, the very highly aestheticized use of the, of the latter filters. You know, that's something that brands should know and are required to know. The third uh, form I talk about is design. So one of, the, one of the interesting hallmarks of design online is that the expedient design on the World Wide Web, that junky non-design that you see on, you know, some of the early services like Yahoo and, 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 uh, Yahoo and AOL, and um, that is, you know, really determined to read the reader. So while you're involved in it, it's collecting data from you and it's, you know, it's trying like a, like a, like a souk, like an open market to kind of pick your pocket at every turn and you have to be on guard against it. Well, that's an experience that some, that some internet users like or at least tolerate in order to try to get the resources of those sites. But then you look at the use of apps that have resurrected Japanese design, Italian design, um, Scandinavian design, and some of the tropes of the 20th century that were associated with higher art. So recognizing that split is very, very important, and recognizing also that there's an elitist and a populist split. You spend all your time on apps, then you have no exposure to the vocabulary that generated the campaign of Donald Trump, or that makes Red Bull, you know, such a compelling brand. You know, you don't touch the id of people. You live entirely on these beautiful removed apps, and you're missing something from the human experience. Um, so figuring out a way with design to show up online and maybe show up on mobile is a challenge for brands and for, and for new businesses. The other parts of the book treat music, treat, treat um, video, 
which is obviously a, an extremely compelling um, part of the internet, partly because videos graphed so well onto ads. Um, but, uh, you know, YouTube has a grammar almost like nothing else. It can be very opaque. It needs to be studied. You need digital natives or at least people who are like uh, really emotionally drawn to YouTube in order, or, and, and Snapchat in order to use it properly and, and with proper respect for how it works. You know, it's extraordinary to me that a campaign will drop into a form out of nowhere, or you see brands doing this on Twitter all the time, without any understanding of how hashtags work or tagging works. And then last, music. Now, music is, you know, a, a world of its own, and um, it's probably worth taking a look at the chapter on music, at least, to understand all the ups and downs of it. But typically, you know, typically digital uh, uh, visual culture and, and text culture is silent. We don't like unwanted sound on the internet. We don't like unwanted sound from our phones. We're always being asked to silence them. And so music is, has to be a powerful experience and also a live experience. Companies that have, have embraced the return of live culture in the form of conferences, concerts, are, are doing well, they're embracing the future. That, that maker culture, foodism, all those things that can't be digitized, you know, that like a live concert, are, you know, are the future. That pushback on the internet is the future.